Okay. Hi, my name is Katie Arrowood. And my name is Aaliyah Walker. And uh, we are here today just to go over some sales management um, things that you should always remember and oftentimes easy to forget. And so we wanted to come up with a theme for today's um, discussion. So we came up with the theme, time is money. Welcome to the 2022 sales world. So we kind of came up with this um, and Aaliyah and her discussions kind of goes over compensation in the sales world, but time is so valuable, especially in the aspect of your time, but also the customers. And we always want to make sure we're using the time to the best of our abilities and very beneficial to both parties involved. So we thought this was just a great reminder um, of some things a lot of times you forget that we're going to go over with y'all today. So the first topic um, I'm going to be discussing is being a leader. So I wanted to compare it to being a manager because so many times people are like, I want to be in charge and they like refer to themselves as the manager. But in this position, you are the leader and being the leader is more valuable to your employees. So managing is whenever people are um, being controlled or the supervisor, supervisor or the boss, which being a leader, you can also still be the supervisor or the boss. Um, and it's whenever you're very direct, but whenever you're leading people, you're mentoring them, you're communicating well with them, you're their number one fan, their cheerleader, their coach. So whether this is um, someone lower in the managerial status or higher, you always want to be there supporting them on, um, letting them be the best versions of themselves that they can, as well as empowering others to make decisions. So whether they're like stuck on a sale and they can't um, figure out what the best decision to make, you are there to be their support and helping them make that decision. Um, so also wanted to be discussing technology because it's everywhere in the world um, today. So um, the first thing I want to be discussing is ECR. So what ECR is the efficient customer response. So this is to increase the level of services to customers through close cooperation among retailers, wholesalers, as well as manufacturers. The next up I'm going to be discussing is EDI, which is electronic electronic data interchange, which is businesses electronically communicating information that was traditionally communicated through paper. Um, and it's so much more efficient, like time efficient, as well as financially efficient to be using EDI. And then CRM, customer relationship management. So this is a business model for that focuses on increasing revenues and profits by focusing on customers and customers driven enterprise. As well as being in 2022, we have so much accessibility that we're so grateful for, for computers and mobile phones that are literally in our pockets every single day, as well as um, interactive web presences. So this can be through apps um, and other resources that you have to reach out to your customers um, to reach all platforms possible to have that relationship with, with them, whether it's adding them as a friend on Facebook or connecting with them on LinkedIn. There's so many different ways you can create that um, customer relationship management to keep your customers happy. So the other thing I wanted to be discussing is ethics. Ethics is something that is so important to me. Um, so social um, and cultural environment of it. So I wanted to have an official definition and I have an unofficial definition. Um, so the official definition is this development of moral standards by which actions and situations can be judged. So sales, manager, uh, sales managers, this comes into a factor with relationships with salespeople as well as interactions between customers. Um, an unofficial definition of ethics I've written down is a discipline concerned with what is morally good and bad and what is morally right and wrong. So managers must influence ethical performance by example and ethical standards reflect integrity of the firm. Um, the next thing I want to be discussing is being successful in selling. So um, I just came up with a list of key factors that are very important. Um, so the first one being personal planning and time management. The second one being closing skills. The third one being ability to overcome, overcome objections. Um, the next one being able to interact with people at all levels of an organization following verbal communication skills, as well as being well organizing and having tenacity, um, ability to adapt sales styles to, situ uh, to any sales style um, in any situation, following up skills and listening. So these are all key factors um, that are a key factor in the workplace, but also with your customers. So knowing what you're talking about, having knowledge of the product or the organization, 
um, that you're working with or the product you're trying to sell as well like, as well as that we keep think one thing we keep stressing is the relationship that you have with the customer following up with them seeing how they're liking with the product and listening to their questions answering them thoroughly and there's so many different ways that you can do this and then lastly i briefly just wanted to go over um, building those customer relationships so um, there were four key factors that we came up with to keep those relationships and keep building them. So never under promise or over deliver. Uh, under, no, always under promise um, over deliver. Uh, the second one being don't forget the small things. The third one being stay in contact with your customers. I know I just said that, but that's so important to know that they are valued, their purchases are valued and you appreciate them and as well as establishing a feedback system. So this can be done on the website with a product review. We encourage um, good and bad because with bad, we can always grow from those. And with good, we know what we're doing right, what people like, what they're wanting to see. And we can, we can see feedback from both. And so they are both beneficial to the company. So it's always good to encourage those. Then Aaliyah is going to be discussing some key factors as well. So there are some objectives that managers need to focus on when um, training their Salesforce team. And so some of these objectives include to improve selling skills. They want to increase the productivity, improve the morale of the salespeople on the team, lower Salesforce turnover, which means to lower the amount of people that quit the job, also to nurture customer relations and have better time and territory management. And so it's important for managers to want to drive high morale and this will increase the amount of people that want to stay on the job. And so if people are happy in their positions, they'll stay. And there's a way to increase this morale. And so one of those being through compensation, but there's some dangers to it because you can overcompensate people. And when doing this, this costs the company a lot of money and it reduces the overall profit. And when you pay people too much, it can also cause resentment and low morale amongst the employees. And so when this happens, it causes jealousy and it breaks that team spirit. But what can also happen is when you pay salespeople too little and this causes that high turnover rate. And um, when you pay people too little, you get poor performance and they won't try to do as well on their job if you're not paying them enough. And so there are multiple ways to compensate people in sales. And so um, the most basic way is the salary. So you have an annual salary and then you can also pay them through commission. And so with commission, they receive a percentage of the sales that they um, completed. And so this, um, this also increases that high morale. And so you can also do bonuses, which are basically like rewards or monetary rewards for people that you can tell that are really trying. And as managers, you can um, reward people with these bonuses and also host a sales contest, which I'll go into, and also give out benefits. And so these can be things outside of monetary rewards. So with the sales contest, there are three ways to have a contest. You can have the salespeople compete amongst themselves. And to do this, they can try to reach a certain quota. And so the manager will ask everyone to have a quota by the end of the week, or you can do by the end of the month, end of the year, it doesn't matter. And whoever reaches this quota first or exceeds the quota, will win that contest and get some compensation and a reward. Also, there's another way, so you can have the sales force compete with each other. And by competing with each other, that builds that morale and that excitement amongst the team. And whoever gets the highest overall performance or exceeds that quota for that year, they will receive that reward, that monetary reward. 
And also a third format could be split the team, will split the overall team into smaller teams. And then the teams will compete against each other. And they will get a group or individual prize. And this could be like a company trip or um, some swag or something or a promised mm, bonus at the end of the year, anything like that. All right, and thank you so much for listening. And we hope that this training video was very helpful. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your time.